All right, folks, uh, welcome to the second edition of Webinar Wednesdays today. Uh, I'm your host, Pete Downing, and I got a great guest, and I'm actually very excited to have these guys on because I've been playing with this product now for just over a month, and it's probably one of my favorite products as far as plugging into WBD, my friends from Nerdio, and we're going to talk about how to get you there faster. And on the phone, I have founder and CEO, uh, Vadim. Vadim, do you want to give yourself a quick introduction and kind of your background a little bit? Sure, sure, Pete. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, thanks, everyone who's, uh, who's on with us for joining. Um, my name is Vadim. I am the founder and CEO of Nerdio. Started the company about four years ago or so at this time. Uh, and prior to that, I was uh, I was in an MSP space, uh, running virtual desktops for lots of small and mid-sized business customers all over the world for about 10 years or 11 years before starting the company. So, built a lot of virtual desktop know-how operationally, uh, which is what helped to really launch Nerdio and and all of its products um, that focus on virtual desktops. Yeah, no, it's it's great, and uh, and I love the background that you and uh, Joseph have, and the team it's uh it's a great background i do actually watch some of your your uh the webinars you guys do around building an msp and et cetera. they're they're very valuable so thank you for that so um, all right so we are on a go to webinar just as a quick housekeeping note uh and we do encourage questions so if you have any questions at all please put them into the q a dialogue and i do pay attention to those and i do throw those questions in because let's face it uh Questions drive conversation and may drive us into an area of a demo that we could actually show. So definitely ask those questions and, and I'll be keeping an eye on those. Um, so just a quick flow for today. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction. We got some a couple polls that I like to ask just to get some ideas on what the audience is looking at. Uh, then we'll dive right into Nerdio and Nerdio is going to and Vadim is going to give us a great demo of the platform, how it works, how you can get it. And I'm going to tell you right now. It, you should hang up this phone after we're done and go get it in the in the Microsoft Azure store. It's it's definitely it's easy and it, you'll have it up in less than what do you think, Vadim? Ten minutes on average? Uh, Fifteen to twenty to deploy it. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, about twenty minutes or so. Cool. So uh, if you haven't already, please bookmark our page uh, zentegra.com forward slash webinars. Uh, we are doing a series all year long on Wednesdays. Uh, I try to keep this slot and or the 11 o'clock slot, depending on uh, the vendor and the time zone. Uh, so definitely bookmark that. I got a lot of great vendors upcoming. I got Control up next week. I got Zadara uh, and I got a lot of other vendors vying for spots on my webinar Wednesday slot. Parallel to that, uh, we, we got Zentegra.com forward slash events. If you're interested, I got two great events next week. One focused on VMware and how it's plugging into um, the whole WBD and Azure space. And then later next week, I do my monthly workshop on WBD. And I actually do pilot and show off uh, Nerdio as far as a key partner in the stack. So definitely check out those events. And then finally, uh, we do our podcast sessions. And uh, so if you go to zentegra.com forward slash podcast, right now we have a podcast that's called the Citrix Session up there. And that's focused on anything and everything Citrix, Andy, our founder and CEO does that. And then as a little sneak peek, I actually got confirmation today. I will be interviewing Brian Madden and turning the tables on him from when I did a podcast with him years ago uh, when I was at Ardents. Uh, and I'm going to be kicking off a new podcast series called The Pete Perspective. So keep an eye out for that. All right. So a little fun here. We'll see if the audience is awake. Uh, I got a couple questions that I want to ask the audience and uh, and get you guys involved here. So the first question I'm going to ask is a very simple one. My enterprise is considering Microsoft Windows, uh, you know, WVD. So again, pick the best answer that it pertains to you. And, and this is anonymous, and we can't see the answers, nor can other folks. We just see the data, and that's it. So again, hopefully we can get everybody to answer. But I like to at least get half the audience, so we can have some fun statistics. So we'll give you a couple seconds while you guys put your answers in. And we'll give it about a couple more going once, going twice, and last call, final answers, and I'm going to share it. So we got a good spread of folks. Uh, actually, pretty pretty surprising. We got 55% that said you would like to pilot it. Um, so 
I guarantee you after today, one, give me a call because I'll help you get there faster. And two, we're going to layer in Nerdy to help you with that. And, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll interject some questions I have, but I'll also, hopefully, if Vadim lets me, I'll share you some of the things I love about Nerdio. Um, and then for those that's not on the radar, you know, listen, I hope you walk away today and say, yep, this is something that can help me get there uh, pretty fast. And then for those who are currently testing, hopefully you have Nerdio in the fold. If not, uh, I can definitely help you get it up and running. All right, let's talk about your public cloud strategy. And I'm guessing if you guys are looking here, I, I expect everybody to answer Microsoft Azure, but hey, who knows? So pick the best cloud of which one you're actually considering or which one are you actually on? Um, and again, by private cloud, I mean like an Equinix, a TierPoint, an AT&T, a Cage data center. Um, if you're not in the cloud and you have your own data center, say none. Um, so again, pick the answer that pertains to you the best. Like, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the right answer because you could have all, all the above, right? The hybrid model. We'll give it a couple more seconds, going once, going twice, and last call. All right, so as I thought, everybody's pretty much looking at Azure, which is is not new news. But the funny thing is, if I asked this question, I would say even three years ago, uh, we could all probably guess who the number one vendor would be. It's the Amazon Web Services, and that's quickly shifting. And I, and I truly believe it's because Microsoft has put a huge investment, not only in the Azure stack, but also in enterprise-worthy functionalities and features. All right, so the final question, a uh, very easy question. Hey, I'm using Microsoft Office 365. And that's it's an important question because as you start looking at WVD, uh, you definitely need Azure AD in the fold. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to architect that. And you know, definitely if there's any questions, we can you can plug Vadim and I's experience on on that as well. Uh, you know, and as we get the answers in, I mean personally I'm I'm helping. Uh, I'm involved with 10 deployments as we speak of WVD. And we'll do last call for, for final answers. Going once, twice, and last call, and good. So wow, all right, we got a lot of you using Exchange Online. Now the funny thing is if I asked this question three years ago, is when I started asking this question, it was the other way around. It was, hey, I'm on-prem or hybrid. Um, and then I've never had this many people using Google Chrome. So I'm actually, that's what I said wow about is I've never seen this, uh, seen that many people. So good on you guys for using Google Chrome uh, and, and it's awesome. All right, so thanks for playing. That's a lot of great data. It helps us kind of understand, you know, what's going on in the audience. Um, and if you're not following Nerdio and or Zintegra on social media, please do. Um, I can tell you this right now, uh, definitely give Nerdy a follow on LinkedIn. They put up great information, great videos. Uh, Vadim's one of the guys behind the, the behind the videos. So I love those videos, Vadim, thanks. Uh, and again, follow us, uh, YouTube. I'm building out a nice little channel. I put this up there eventually. So this, this recording will be put up there eventually. Um, and we just build out content as well. So again, definitely give us a follow on social. All right, so today you're here to talk about Nerdio. We're going to we're going to make that happen. And really the theme is how to get you there faster and and the demo is going to speak for itself. I think, you know, Vinny, what did I say? You knocked me off my feet when uh when you gave me the demo. And literally the day that he gave me the demo, I went and installed this and had it up and running and started demoing it the next day. So that's how excited I was as a partner and that's why I wanted to get this webinar up and running. So with that, I introduce uh, Nerdio and the manager for WVD, and I'm going to pass the baton over to you, Vadim, and let you do your thing. And again, if thank there's any you. questions, please, please ask, and I'm paying attention to the Q&A dialogue. So thank you, Vadim, and, and the floor is yours. Awesome. All right. Well, well, thanks for that introduction. It was kind of interesting to see all the, the dynamics on, on what people are using in terms of cloud and, and how many are interested in, in WVD. That That's definitely consistent with what we are seeing in the market certainly with the whole COVID-19 situation there's been a tremendous amount of, of demand so we are you know non-stop helping uh, partners and customers get WVD deployed and as the theme of the webinar says it's it's how to get it done faster uh, and just by way of example you know before I even start showing you the product and telling you about the background of the company but you know, I, I think I did two or three deployments yesterday, and, and in every case, 
we schedule a two hour time slot and our deliverable uh, within two hours is to have a customer up and running with a test group of users using the virtual desktops and having a custom image uh, that they've been able to install some applications on and provision to uh, to that post pool, right? So, so we normally get involved with customers when they have been working for weeks and weeks and weeks trying to stand up WVD and not having full success. And then within that two hour window, probably eight out of 10 times if the customer comes to the table with all of the prerequisites met, they can be up and running. So I had somebody yesterday that I think within 90 minutes we had them deployed completely from zero. They had not even registered the WVD application in their Azure AD tenant and completely from, from zero to 60, 90 minutes. They had two host pools. One was in, I think it was, was in East US two and one was in Central India. Uh, and they were joined to the domain and they were running desktops within 90 minutes. So, uh, so that's sort of the type of velocity that we aim to provide to customers with our product. Uh, we are very obsessive about how we you know, make the workflow go, what the installation process looks like, how many buttons there are to click. So we, we really obsess over the UI, trying to make it as efficient as possible. So wait, wait, time out. You're telling me you take a user first mentality, Vadim? <laughs> we do <laughs> not. We, we're actually a SaaS company, as you know, right? We're a yeah, software yeah. company, but Given the avalanche of customers out there that uh, that want to be deployed, uh, we we have unfortunately had to step into the role of providing yeah. uh, you know the deployment of of Nerdio Manager at least. So we're definitely a partner first company. Uh, yeah. But for the last six weeks, I, I think I've I've gotten very little sleep and I've worked yeah. with every type of customer of every size in every corner of the world just to get them up and running as quickly as we can. Yeah, and I, no, sure, but but I was more talking on your UI. I mean, your UI is great, and and you definitely have put the user kind of flow first, and I, and that's what I do love about it is you is you put a design thinking approach behind it. And I, I'm an ex product okay. manager, that's why I asked that question. Is uh, yeah, I used to manage dev teams, so I I love yeah. how you guys laid it out, and it, it's very clean. And and yeah, we'll see in a second. So. Following us on. Um... Uh, on the social. So one of the things that I've ever made a commitment to myself that as, as I'm sitting working from home here, I decided I'm going to do a WVD demo, a short little demo, as short as I can make it every single day. Uh, and I just kicked that off, you know, on Monday. So every day I'll be posting a demo of some unique feature, either of WVD or the Nerdio manager for WVD. And the very first video that I did was on the new installation workflow where we took let's say the eight steps we had about four weeks ago down to only five steps and i'm trying to get it down to four steps right so kind of incrementally getting that user experience to be as, as seamless as possible so with with that as a background uh just to give you a little bit on the company so as i mentioned earlier you know my background was really in, in being a service provider and running a service provider company for for well over a decade, from about 2005 to 2016, and the focus of that MSP was all about virtual desktops. You know, we did terminal services first, then RDS, eventually settled on VMware Horizon, um, and, and really got the to break our teeth on operationalizing virtual desktops at scale. Right, many many different customers all over the world with quite a big scale for that service provider business. And then in 2016, decided that we're going to start Nerdio as a way of helping other service providers build the cloud practice with virtual desktops. So we launched our, our Nerdio brand with the Nerdio private cloud being our first product and very quickly realized that people did not want to be in the private cloud. They really wanted to be in Azure uh, specifically. So we, we pivoted and said, okay, let's create a product for Azure, which we called Nerdio for Azure. And that's a product we have that's separate from the Nerdio Manager, which is what we're talking about today and I'll be showing you today. It also has WVD capabilities, but it is a product that's targeted more to MSPs and those who want to manage you know, a lot of customers in a single pane of glass across multiple aspects of Azure, not just WVD. And in the process of working on that product, we got hooked up with the Microsoft um, you know, RDS product team were part of the initial RDMI 
limited preview, worked with them and building that functionality into Nerdio for Manager uh, and Nerdio for Azure and launched it right, right the same day that it went GA, I think last September 30th last year. So in the process, you know, we've probably since GA with our Nerdio for Azure product deployed well over a thousand customers um, just in the last few months and we're doing about 150 or so new deployments, maybe closer to 200 now every single month with that product. But what we realized very quickly is that enterprise customers who wanted help deploying WVD started coming to us and they said, we like all the functionality that you have, but this multi-tenant kind of MSP targeted product doesn't really work well for us because we have you know, data privacy concerns. We don't want to have a third party plugged into our Azure AD. We want something that's our own and we can manage it. It's like, can you give us a, an instance of Nerdio for Azure that's its own sort of application running inside of our environment only? So we decided, you know what, instead of trying to retrofit our existing product, we're going to create something brand new. And that's what this Nerdio manager for WVD became. It became a new, brand new product that really aims to do two things. It helps to create a UI on top of the native WVD functionality and expose all of the features that are available in WVD through a really easy to use UI that you'll see in just a couple of minutes. And then the second, uh, second ob objective of the product is to add additional functionality that sort of bridges the gap between what the native WVD is right now and what people that are coming from a Citrix or a VMware desktop virtualization environment are expecting, you know, things like auto scaling and image management and session management and just being able to see things at, in, all in one place and just all, all the operational things that people need in order to run a virtual desktop environment. So we decided we are going to create this Nerdio Manager for WVD. And as I mentioned, it has you know, these three categories of benefits. It helps operationalize WVD at scale. So a very large deployment. You can have different groups of users uh, controlling it and logging in and making changes. It speeds up the deployment as we talked about. And it just gives the admins the ability to easily manage the environment day to day, make changes, do image updates, all of those kinds of things. Then the second category is around reducing Azure costs. That's really huge because with the right type of auto scaling, which Nerdio for Manager brings to the table, we're able to help customers reduce their Azure compute and storage costs by something like 75% as compared to pay as you go running 24 by seven, which obviously is very significant when you're talking about WVD because it's a very compute centric type of a workload and, and the more you can reduce compute and storage, the more attractive it is on a per user per month basis type of a cost model. And then we do all of that by, by helping customers reinforce an existing security model. And the way we accomplish it is by creating the product as a standalone application, not as a SaaS platform. So this is not a multi-tenant product that plugs into customers' environments. This is an Azure application that consists of those five uh, PaaS services that you can see on the left and right of the screen. There's a web app, SQL Server, App Insights, Key Vault, and Automation. And all of those components get deployed from the marketplace into the customer's own Azure environment. They choose what region it goes into. They choose who has access to it. Nerdio retains no access into the system whatsoever. So it's fully controlled by the customer it really helps them overcome any concerns with security, compliance, data residency, all of those kinds of things that are really important for enterprise and government customers. So that is all I'm gonna do in terms of slides. I know people love looking at slides, but I think they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll wanna look at the product as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and switch over to show you what it actually looks like in, uh, in real life for those of you who haven't seen it yet. So, Vadim, a question from me. Um, yeah. So let's say, hypothetically, I, I had 10 customers that I'm managing uh, with your product. Or is there yeah. a plan to eventually plug this into your other core product so that I could do multi-management across the different the different tenants? Or would I just use your other product? So let's you say, know, it's it's a great question. There, there, it's something that we've, we've been batting around and discussing internally. We haven't really 
put it on on the formal roadmap yet. Yeah. Um, and, and it's sort of the balance between the end customer wanting that isolation, segregation, and security, and at the same time, our partners who are using the product to help customers wanting a single pane of glass management capability, right? And those two are sort of in conflict with each other. Yeah, so yeah. we've yeah. we've chosen to go the you know the customer security route first, um, but we are thinking about okay, is there a way to maybe overlay some sort of a management UI that a partner can then use to manage multiple instances of this. So the, the way the way to think about it is, you know, if you if you have a Windows 10 installation on a device, right, that installation gets updated from a, you know, like a Microsoft repository, but it is running locally. So you have full control of that instance. But then if you plug it into Intune, right, then you can manage multiple instances of that Windows 10 on different devices. So currently our model is just like Windows 10. It runs in, on an individual cloud system. It gets updated from our repository, but it's fully isolated from us. Um, and then in the future, we may have a management UI that can bring a lot of these individual installations into one portal for a partner to manage a lot of customers in one place. Cool. So, um, so this is what the product looks like. Uh, I guess before before I show you this, let me show you what the deployment process would be. So, if we go into the Azure Marketplace, um, I don't know if we can go to Azure Portal, but either way, let's start with the marketplace, and we're going to search for Nerdio. We got Nerdio Manager right up there. We're going to click on Get It Now. This will redirect us into the Azure portal. We're going to click Create an Instance. And there's really five steps here, but there's really only, only two steps that you need to provide information. First one are the basics. You select your subscription. You create a resource group. It does need to go into a new one. It's like I used nine already, so let's use 10. You select your region. It can go into any any region um, that you want. And then the second thing you have to provide is either provide a set of admin credentials that can actually install the application. The only prerequisite for using this option is that MFA must be disabled for the duration of the install. Some environments don't want to do that. They don't want to have any admin accounts with MFA disabled for any period of time, in which case you can just click no. And then later on in the process, you'll be able to run a PowerShell script and it's going to ask you to authenticate interactively. So you, you, don't, um, you don't need to provide the credentials here. If you do provide the credentials, then the whole installation process is fully automated. It will register itself as an application in Azure AD automatically. So we click OK say that yes we've read the next step instructions there is a, a link to a quick start guide that has a step-by-step -step of you know what, what what this process looks like click ok this will validate our resource providers are registered click ok and that's really it so we click create and this will build a new instance of the nerdio manager in, in about 15 minutes or so it will provision a, a sql small sql database a web app key vault etc so that's what the deployment process looks like. Really straightforward. And I and I just want to give a kudos to you guys. I mean, you've really streamlined that process, and then your guide is very cut and dry and, and very simple to follow. So it's so a nice job. Thank you. Thank you. So once this thing is deployed, then you come into this screen. And if you have WVD tenants de already deployed, if you've already been doing you know, a native WVD with PowerShell or with another tool, you will see all of that information right here. Um, and you'll be able to manage it right away. Or you can go ahead and create a new tenant. So for the purposes of our, our demo here, I'll just go ahead and, um, and create a new tenant here. What's today? The 22nd. So let's put a date on it. Um, this will allow me to, you know, create host pools without interfering with anyone else's demos that <laughs> may be going on at the time. So here's the new tenant I created. If I want to give someone else access as an admin into the application to manage this tenant I just created, I would simply go under permissions. Uh, let's say I would add Joseph. I always use him as an example. So I'm going to add Joseph into this list. Click OK. 
And what's really cool is just by doing what I just did, he can log in with his existing Azure AD credentials into this URL, and he will see this new tenant that I created, but he won't see the other tenants. Now, what's really nice about it is you can have, within the same organization, you can have multiple groups of desktop admins managing different WVD tenants, and you can split up who gets access to what. So once a tenant is created, we click on it to manage. And here you see there we're in the host pool section. There are two sections here. There is static host pools and dynamic host pools. Static host pools are the traditional WVD tenants that you can use with PowerShell. Dynamic host pools have some of the nerdier magic built into them. Specifically, it has the capability of growing and shrinking based on the user demand really completely automatically. So I'm gonna create one right now and show you how that looks. And then the second component of the dynamic host pool is I can, I can tie it to a golden image and I can manage this one single image as a VM and then the pool will automatically take its cue from that image and, and create VMs based on that desktop image. So let's go ahead and create one as an example and you'll see why you know, we can get people stood up and, and deployed in under two hours. So let's go ahead and say, this is gonna be redeem demo host pool. Okay, uh, we have three types of desktop experiences. We can do the most popular one, which is a pool session desktop, where you have multiple users connecting to the same, um, uh, to the same pool of VMs, and, and there are you know, multiple users per VM. We can deploy a remote app where we're, instead of publishing a full desktop, we're publishing a specific application to stream. And then this third one is called a single user desktop, which for those that are familiar with personal desktops, uh, it's a slightly different concept uh, because it's dynamic. So what this allows you to do, this is the equivalent of a random desktop or a floating desktop in the Citrix and VMware worlds, where you can have just a pool of VMs and then users come in, they check a VM out to use for their session, and then they once they're logged off, that VM goes away and scales in and, and gets destroyed. So this is another option that's available in Nerdio that extends the WVD capabilities. So let's go ahead and set up a session desktop. We're gonna use an, a, a name prefix here. This is gonna be the, the prefix of all the VMs that will get created in Azure and the computer objects that will get created in uh, Windows Active Directory. We can select from any predefined networks, any region, so let's go with this network. We can select any image, either from the marketplace or any custom image we wanna use. So let's go with the marketplace image with Office Pro Plus. We can select the size of the VM we wanna provision, and this is a dynamic list. It's actually aware of what's available to me in my subscription in my region. So you can see some of these will be grayed out. That means I don't have them available in the region that I selected. So this is kind of an intelligent dynamic list that's driven by the network that I select here. So for this demo, let's go with a four core machine. We can select our operating system disk, we can select the resource group, and we can assign users or do that later. So let's just leave assigned users blank and click OK. So what this will do is it will create the host pool object in WVD. So now if we assign any users, they'll log in and they'll see it listed, but we haven't built any session host capacity um, in that pool. And that's where this step comes in. This is the auto scale configuration screen. So first thing we got to do is turn it on. Once it's turned on, you can see we got these settings, which are the ones we just selected on the previous screen, and they can be changed at any time. So if I want to say, hey, you know what, a four core VM is not what I wanted, I want an eight core VM, it can be updated right from here very easily. Okay, let's go with four core. Uh, and then down here, you define your parameters around how you want this pool to look and how big you want it to be. So first thing is how many VMs are gonna be in this pool? So let's say we're gonna start with three VMs and we're going to always have one of them active at a minimum, that means 24 by seven, one VM will be responding as WVD agent will say available to its heartbeat. And, and that's always gonna be the case. Then we can also specify burst capacity that allows us to burst beyond the base. So if our base is three VMs and our burst is two VMs, that means at a maximum we can have five VMs in this pool 
I will always have one running at a minimum, but I could have up to five running depending on the scaling logic, which is the next section, right? And this is really nice because you can configure, let's say my base is only gonna be three, but maybe my burst is gonna be a hundred, right? And it will never create these VMs unless there's so much utilization that justifies them being created. And when it doesn't create them, it obviously doesn't consume storage and it doesn't consume compute, which saves a lot of money. So now let's look at the scaling logic. So the, the host pool sizing tells us how big or small the pool can be, sort of what's the minimum and the maximum range. And then the scaling logic tells us specifically how big it's gonna be at any given time. And there's multiple triggers. I'll just show you the CPU usage one. So let's say if our CPU usage exceeds 65% for five minutes or longer, I want it to scale out by one host at a time. And scale out means either start a stopped host, right? So one of these three, you know, we start out with one running and two powered off. So scale out will start the second one first and then the third one. And then once it started all of them, then it's gonna start building them from the burst capacity if the CPU utilization is still that high. And then on the way in to scale in, we can say if the CPU utilization is 30% for 15 minutes or longer, I want you to scale in one host at a time. And that means first removing or, or deleting these burst capacity hosts. And then once all of them are removed, then it can start stopping these base capacity. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so uh, Vadim, uh, I actually have a question that has been burning me, um, not burning me, but burning in me because I get it asked all the time. I don't know how I don't know how to answer it in a good way. So, how does auto? How and I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it from the expert. So, how does the uh, auto scale, or how should I, I'll phrase it there? How is auto scale better than scale sets, and what's the difference between a scale set and auto scale? And that's a question I commonly get. That's that's a good good question. So it, auto scale is the process that scale sets use, right? So this basically created, we basically created all of the scale set functionality without using the scale set construct in Azure. And, and there's actually a reason for that because in our Nerdia for Azure product, we did use scale sets. So we implement very similar auto scaling in that product and we actually leverage the native scale set technology in Azure. And it works exactly the same way. You set your CPU threshold and then it grows when it exceeds it and then it shrinks when it goes below it. So conceptually it's the same, um, but we, we ran into some limitations. Like for example, scale sets only support a finite amount of triggers. Like you can do, for example, RAM based or session-based scaling. And for the Nerdio manager, we heard from customers, they wanted more options of how to configure their auto scaling. So we basically built our own scale set capabilities using traditional VMs in the Nerdio manager. So I hope that answers your question. So scale set is a Azure construct that yep. performs an auto scale process. And we performed that auto scale process just in a more robust way specifically for WVD, because scale sets weren't built for WVD. This is built specifically for WVD. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's kind of what I was thinking, but I, I wanted to make sure my, my thought process was correct, so. Yeah. So then the, the other configuration we have here is pre-staging. Now, pre-staging is useful when you have a lot of users starting work around the same time. You don't want to wait for CPU to get high in order to start scaling out. What you really want is you want by a certain time of day, let's say Monday through Friday by 8 a.m., you may wanna have two or three or 10, however many hosts ready to go. So when users walk into their office at 8 a.m., there is capacity available for them. So now, and then there's a message you can configure, which is what users see when scale and kicks in. So I'm just gonna click save on this screen. And that's really all the configuration that we need to do. So here's what's gonna happen. We just created a pool that has capacity of three, but it currently only has zero hosts at the moment. So what does that mean? That means the system says, okay, well, wait a second. You told me you want three, but you currently have zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and build you three new hosts. And you can see right now the process started. 
it just kicked into gear. They're all happening concurrently. So it will take about 15 minutes to build any number of VMs all at the same time. And you can peek under the hood by clicking on the details and you can see exactly what it's doing, right? It's, it's gonna be installing FSLogix, it's creating the VM, it already built the network interface, it will join it to the domain, it will install the WBD agent. We'll go through the entire process of making this host available in about 15 minutes from the time I click that save button. So in 15 minutes, after assigning some users to the pool, I will be in and have a user session ready to go. Yeah, and that's one of my, I love going into the log because I remember remember when I was trying to get this spun up and I hit an issue and you and you kind of, you said, oh, it might be this, it might be that. So I went and looked in the log and you were right. So <laughs> <And> <laughs> the, the logging was, uh, is very, I love it. It just, it keeps it easy for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I am, I guess, oversimplifying this a little bit because I have all the prerequisites in my demo environment already configured, right? So when I create a host pool, it already knows what Active Directory I will join, right? So it has this configured. It already knows what my FSLogix configuration is going to be. That's already configured. So I'm cheating a little bit, but I will show you where all of that is configured. So if you go under settings, for example, you can click on this Active Directory box here, and you can configure the, the domain name, credentials, and the OU path that will be used to join these VMs into that Active Directory, right? So you set this globally, and then it automatically gets inherited by any host pools that are created, or you can override it on a per host pool basis. Maybe you want to put your VMs in a certain OU for each and every host pool. Same thing with FS Logic Storage. You know, I configured my path right here. You just need to have a UNC path available. It could be Azure Files, could be Azure Netup Files, could be just a file server, what have you. You set it up in this global settings page, and then every host pool you create will inherit those settings. And then my networks and my resource groups are linked here. So if I wanted to link another resource group, I just click link, you know, select the resource group, click OK. And now that resource group will be available from that drop down that you saw me select earlier uh, to configure it. So not a lot of uh, complexity in setting up the environment from the beginning. I guess that the hardest thing is really getting your Azure sort of landing zone built out from a networking perspective to be ready to have VMs joining the domain, right? That means that you need to have a domain controller either in Azure or have the network in Azure have connectivity back to your domain controller somewhere else, on premises in most cases. So like th that's probably the hardest part of the configuration. But once the networking and Active Directory synchronization is done, then setting up the actual WVD piece of it is uh, is pretty quick and straightforward. Yeah, and 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 I, I'll put some experience in here too. I think the funny thing is the hardest part of WVD is not WVD. It's the it's the components getting set up initially. So it's your networking, it's your so your VNets, it's your NSGs, it's your resource group strategy. It's all those little pieces that you know are, are critical to making sure that even just your Azure is working correctly. So and I think people forget that. And uh, it's I spent actually a lot of time educating folks on on Azure AD and the AD requirements and you know things like that when talking about WVD. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so a question, a couple of questions uh, came in. Uh, one, in, and I'm holding one for when you get to it, because I think you're going to talk about the the AD and user assignment process. But um, question came in around that user acceptance dialogue. Uh, so is that just the pop up dialogue that pops up? So you know, and you know, ask them to save their work, and then they they get bumped out, and then they log back in, they'll log into an instance that's available. How, how does that work? Yeah, great question. So let let's go and take a look at this. So I, I think the question pertains to this step number four, which is messaging. Yep. So he, he, here is where this comes into play, right? So we are telling the system, let's change this to, let's say, 6 p.m. We're telling the system that after 6 p.m., which is, let's say, when business hours are over, if the utilization is below 30% for 50 minutes or longer, we wanted to start scaling it, right? Now, again, scaling in can mean stop or remove a VM. The way the system is going to act and the algorithm, and it's all kind of outlined here, is that it will look at every single VM that's currently in this host pool, and it will find the ones that have no user sessions on them at all, 
and then it will scale those in first right away, right at 6 p.m. or actually 6.15 because it's got to wait 15 minutes. However, at some point, it will scale in all the VMs and there will be no VMs that have no sessions on them, meaning there will be a bunch of VMs with a few sessions here and there. So what it's going to do in that case is it will take the VM that has the least number of active sessions, it will put it in drain mode so that no new connections can come into it. It will send whatever message you as the administrator configure, telling the user to log out and log back in. When they do that, they will be placed in another host because this host is now in drain mode. And then it will give them this many minutes, right? So it could be either no warning or it could be up to an hour. And then after this number of minutes, it will log them off if they haven't logged off. It will shut that machine down, and if it's one of the burst machines, it will actually destroy it. So that's where this message comes in. So after 6 p.m., when it's below 30%, and when there are no more machines that have no user sessions on them. So this ensures that you always scale in, because your users, if you basically say, hey, I'm not going to scale in unless nobody's on the machine, what you'll end up with is users forgetting to log off which means either you're never going to scale in or you're going to have to get really aggressive on your session time. Session to be logged off, which is great at the end of the day, but what happens when they go to lunch and they disconnect their session for 30 minutes and they come back and have to restart all of their applications. So this kind of gives you the best mix between still saving and scaling in and forcing the user's hand to do it but very gently at the end of business hours. Awesome, and and, um, and, and, and just to clarify too, that you don't have to use this functionality. So if you're doing like a bunch of reserved instances, as an example, then you know you can you, you don't have to necessarily use this if you don't want to, correct? Yeah, you would just click off, yep. and then once you click off, you know you can manage. Here, so let's go into another tenant that has some uh, that has some machines in it, but you know, like you can manage VMs individually. So you can, you know, delete or or add, right? You can say, I have a host pool. You can turn all the scaling off and you can say, I want 25 more VMs. I'm going to give it some sort of a prefix, select all my settings and click OK. And this will build it for you manually and it will never shut them down. You are full control over, you know, which machines get powered off and, and not by setting the auto scaling parameter. So you can see this pool has no auto scaling. And these two pools do. So you're in full control as an administrator, definitely. Yeah. Um, and reserved instances are are great. And what we found is that let's say with the reserved instance, you maybe are saving, you know, let's say, assuming you're using, you know, the WVD licensing through Windows 10, which you know everyone does. Let's say you're saving about 50, 60 percent on the compute. And if your users are on the system more than, you know, let's say 40% of the time, you're better off just doing reserved instances and keeping everything on 24 by 7. However, in most cases, if it's a 40-hour work week or even a 50-hour work week, out of 168 hours in a week, that's less than a quarter of the time. So you can save even more by not doing reserved instances and using auto scaling. Yeah, and, and and again, uh, you know, unprompted, but you guys have a great calculator, uh, and uh, I'll I'll definitely send that out to everyone as part of my follow up. But definitely want to take time to check out your your calculator that you guys created, dude. It's awesome. I use it as a resource all the time. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. So the the other thing I want to show you is we have this thing called Auto Scale History. Um, which, let me just set this value a little lower, let's set it to five, so our scale is better. Um, but we have this thing called auto scale history, and that really lets you visualize how your host pool is behaving in reaction to like the, the activity of the user. So let's take a look at auto scale history. So what you can see is this is showing me today. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at yesterday. So yesterday we had, um, you know, one host and then we had a scale out uh, event that happened because a user logged in and then it went to two machines right and then we had another user log in this is just a demo environment so there isn't a lot going on 
and that again went to two machines. So th this lets you visualize what's happening with the environment. It tracks the number of user sessions and the CPU utilization, and then it shows you what your actual number of hosts is relative to what you would have been if you were static, right? So if you set your maximum to, let's say, 60 VMs, that means you're expecting to at some point need 60 VMs, which is your peak capacity that you're configuring. But if you're using auto scale, you're always gonna be below that number. And most of the time, you're gonna be below that number significantly, like 20% of the time, you're gonna be below that number. So it just, it, it lets you visualize what the savings are relative, uh, relative to full capacity with auto scale. All right, so uh, let's let me show you user assignment because I think that was a question that that uh, was coming in. Uh, you quickly mentioned that. So to assign users currently with WVD with PowerShell is a little painful. So we try to make it much easier. So if you go under Manage Users next to a particular host pool, what you can do is you can either assign users by um, searching for them, just se selecting the users. You can do multiple selections and clicking Assign or you can actually use a group. So for example, if I'm gonna say, I want my marketing group, so there's my marketing group, and then I don't want it to filter by that name. So this will filter by the members of that group. And let's say I also wanna select my you know, sales group, it's gonna filter by that group. Then you can select all the users, click assign, and boom, within, within a few clicks, you now have assigned an entire group, and you can do that up to a thousand users at a time. And, th and this is great because this is a you know inherent flaw right now with how you assign users in in native WVD, and I, this is probably one of my favorite functionalities because it just streamlines how you get assignments out there. Uh, so a question actually came in. It's an interesting question. Um, is you know Azure has the whole Azure AD invitees, right? And so he wants the question came in is can you are you able to give Azure invitees access to uh, WVD instances? Is that possible? Um, and I, I don't, I didn't know the answer to that, so I'll, I'll see if you know the answer. Yeah. So I, I guess, I guess, I think the question is about it, like external users who are outside of the Azure AD tenant being able to log in um, and either manage or access a desktop. So, so the answer is no. I don't believe you can entitle a user from an external AD or Azure AD, I should say, to use a WVD uh, VM or WVD desktop, session desktop. Um, and that's because the other prerequisite of WVD is that you need to have AD to Azure AD synchronization. And by definition, if you have an external user, that external user is not synced with the on-premises or the existing AD. So as a user, that cannot be done today. Uh, and then for management purposes, that's also a limitation um, where you, you have to manage it with a user who is a member of that same Azure AD tenant. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Um, I, I guess while this is being, being created here, if we click on details, we can see you know, what it has done so far, right? So it created a network, it built a VM from the image that we selected, it joined the Active Directory, uh, it had installed FS Logics and configured it with all of those settings that I had provided. It is now joining it to WVD. So we're probably about five minutes away or so from this session host being ready. But if I were to go into my uh, WVD HTML client, um, and I'm logged in as myself, and I don't think I've entitled myself yet. So I shouldn't see this particular tenant uh, listed on my screen here. So let's see if that, you should have other ones, but not that one. Okay, so you see my new tenant I created today is not there. So now let's go here. I'm gonna go to manage users, and I will add my account, assign it to, uh, to the user, there we go, click sign, Boom. and then let's come back here. And refresh the screen. All right, and there we are, right? So there is that tenant we assigned ourselves, myself to. I'm gonna click here, 
I'm going to try to log in and I would expect it to fail because the desktops aren't ready yet. Yep. So there we go. Desktops aren't ready yet. But as soon as they are, which is imminent, um, then we'll just hit reconnect and we will be on our desktop. You know, some of the other things that are, you know, notable uh, for sort of ease of administration are the desktop images. So we make the whole process of managing a desktop image as easy as powering on a VM. So I'm going to turn on this clean image VM. I'm going to RDP into it using this IP address right here, make whatever changes I need, whether it's, you know, Windows updates, Office updates, install applications, whatever the case may be. And then once that machine is on, this button that's right here that I just clicked on will say by default power off and set this image. And yep. when I click that one button, it goes through the entire and then I can show you what that actually looks like on the back end, but it will go through the entire process of taking those changes and committing them to an Azure image. Once, and you see there's a lot happening here uh, as part of that automation. Once that happens, this date stamp gets updated and then I can take my image and I could apply it to any number of host pools all at the same time. So for instance, let's go ahead and go into this demo tenant here. Let's say I have a sales and marketing host pool. Now this could be a static or a dynamic host pool. I'm gonna go into resize, re-image, and I will select my newly updated marketing image. Let's say this is it. And then also have the option to change my VM size and operating system disk. And then I can change how many VMs run at the same time. I can schedule it to run at night, click OK. And this is going to go to sleep until 12 AM and then kick into gear and re-image all of the VMs inside of that host pool, no matter how many there are with those changes I just applied. So really easy compared to doing it natively through PowerShell or in the Azure portal. Yeah, that's, a, that's probably one of my favorite features as well is the how you guys have eased the pain of image management because creating that gold master as we like to call it uh, can be yeah. kind of a so you guys have really streamlined that process and made it easy yep exactly so and, and there's lots of other you know things throughout the product to sort of help uh, and there we go here our hosts are ready so i think we'll actually be able to log into one before our time is up Okay, there we go. We got a, a login screen, and I mistyped my credentials. Let's try this again. Hopefully, I can type. And there we are. We have a new desktop, FS Logix, the whole nine yards, all ready to go in the span of, I don't know when we started it, right? But just a few minutes ago in the span of a webinar, uh, yep. we have a new host pool provisions. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tendi made a good point. Uh, uh, you know, this plus, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with IGIL. Uh, IGIL is a great uh, vendor, OS vendor that's in the Lighthouse program alongside you guys and has a great uh, thin OS, you know, IGIL OS that is, uh, you know, able to streamline access to apps and desktops as well. So uh, just as a little side advertisement, I do highlight Nerdio plus IGIL plus WVD in my WVD workshop uh, that I run monthly. So definitely check that out. Awesome. Um, yeah, we, we work closely with those guys. It's a great, yeah. great product. Lots of customers that are uh, that are using using that. Uh, so we yeah. work very closely with them. Yeah, because let's face it, the the client, the web, the, the it's still got a lot of work. So uh, Linux, uh, uh, Igel's done a great job at simplifying it. <laughs> so. For sure. For sure. All right. So final call for questions. And, and Vadim, do you have anything else to show? This is this has been a great demo. I, I always like getting on and doing demos with you because you show a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I have a ton more to show. I don't know if we have if we have a lot more time, but uh, uh, yeah, I think I've hit some of the, the key points. I know I yeah. went through this super quickly, but uh, if you follow uh, me on LinkedIn. I'll be posting those daily demos, and each one will have a link to the entire playlist on YouTube, where you can go in and sort of see each each one of these little things that I've done. Uh, and I have probably 30 or 40 more queued up to go. So, um, you know, if you're interested in the WVD and the Nerdio Manager, keep uh, keep your eye out for those videos coming every day. 
Cool. And uh, just as the icing on the cake, can you just show really quickly the update screen? Because that's another thing that I think you do very well. Yeah. You update your product pretty seamlessly. So yeah, great, great point. So so the update screen is where we publish uh, newly released versions. We'll list list all the new features. You see, we release them pretty frequently. We're going to go to a two week cadence at some point in the near future. But right now, it's pretty much weekly. We release a new build with new features. Lots more functionality coming and to deploy it literally all you do is you click this deploy button this launches an azure automation runbook takes the application offline for about five minutes does not impact user connectivity at all uh, and then updates everything uh, if for some reason you can't use azure automation you can always download the installer kind of as a standalone uh, powershell package and run it from your machine and then we'll also have a scheduler capability where you can set this up to run on a monthly basis or weekly basis and sort of apply the updates automatically in the background. Yeah, that's awesome. And I like that functionality, so. Cool, so uh, final call for questions while we do a quick wrap, but um, I wanna first off, thank you for that awesome demo. I, I'm, a, I'm a big, obviously I love the product and, and love what you guys are doing. Um, so, you know, the good news is uh, Zentegra and Nerdio are officially partners. Uh, and, you know, so if you don't know who Zentegra is, uh, this is Andy, our founder and CEO. And Andy founded the company on one simple premise, enabling our customer base. So one of the examples is we love to do uh, webinars and workshops like this to enable you guys to be uh, in the know of how to streamline and get better use out of the products you own. So this is a great example. Hey, I'm looking at WVD. I need to get there faster. Nerdio is a great partner. Um, so yes, I can actually help get Nerdio up and running. I can sell it to you. I can come in and help you get it running. So Vadim, if you get too much bandwidth, you can always send people my way. Um, and, uh, and we can help you get not only up to WVD, but get there faster uh, with Nerdio. But the benefit of working with a partner is not only the one vendor, but it's all the vendors. So if you're dealing with Citrix, you're dealing with VMware, you're dealing with uh, Microsoft, et cetera, we can hit upon all those solutions and not give you the, oh, you gotta go call support or it's vendor X's fault. So, you know, that's the great thing about working with a partner. So again, if you wanna do a deeper dive and follow up, definitely reach out, we'll be in touch as well. Uh, and if you are interested in finding out more about this great product, definitely reach out. You'll get an email from myself uh, and you'll get some follow up uh, materials as well. So keep an eye out for that in your inbox and we can always help you get WBD up and running and do it fairly efficiently. So with that, I'm gonna do one final call for questions. And while I do the final call for question, any final thoughts, uh, Vadim? Um, no, nothing beyond what we already discussed. Really appreciate you having me on. And if um, there's anything that uh, any of your listeners uh, have as far as feedback or additional features or anything like that, hit me up and we'll be, uh, We'll be happy to uh, try to accommodate uh, whatever we can. We really, as, as you mentioned, customer first type of a product. We build things based on what customers want and need. So thanks All for right. having me on. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. And uh, and if you if you had got pulled away or anything, you will get a copy of this recording as part of the follow up email. And definitely uh, definitely share it with friends because I I really love this product. And uh, and if you're not following myself in the DM on LinkedIn, please do. Uh, like I said, he posts a lot of great content and I, I do as well. So with that, I'm gonna call uh, this webinar a wrap and say thank you everybody for joining us and thank you to Nerdio for joining us as well. And to that, have a great day and see you guys next week.